Yay, good morning, friends. It's actually not morning, it's actually like 12.30. But finally dressed, so that counts. I'm super excited because today I'm gonna show you how to use the um, the goals and big picture planning pages of your online biz mom work and life planner and that is my favorite part because you get to set the scene so first I'm gonna go downstairs see what Penny needs then we're gonna go to Target got a couple things to drop off maybe I'll get a latte and then I'll meet you in the office and we'll go over the goals and big picture planning and map out our year and it's gonna be awesome and you're gonna see you're gonna love it so okay I'll see you soon okay we are back and uh, we're gonna talk about goals and big picture planning I'm super super excited okay so when you first open up your online biz mom work and life planner you have goals and big picture planning as your very first thing to look at and it says what do you want your life to look like in five years in business and in life so we're gonna talk about that and then you flip the page over and this is why I wanted to really show you how to use this because it might be a little confusing um, without any instructions so number two says list all of your values and ideals that are important to you and number three says write down all your goals big and small in business and in life and then the last number four says now go back and rank each of your goals according to your values in the right columns and these are the right columns so you're gonna write down your goals here and then rank them according to your ideals and your values here and I'm gonna show you how to do that all right so we're gonna dive in and oh my gosh at Target well our Target has a Starbucks I think most do now but if you're like me I always got to get a something when I go to Target and I try their new uh, cookie vanilla cookie latte let me know if you had that I tried it it was pretty good I'm normally a matcha or a chai tea person but I was like you know I want to try something a little different um, and yeah I thought it was pretty good not too sweet it was sugar cookie almond milk latte so let me know if you've tried that because I thought it was pretty good all right so number one goals and big picture planning this one is pretty self-explanatory what do you want your life to look like in five years in business and in life don't write your goals for this no goals I want you to just close your eyes ah, take a big breath ah, okay now just picture yourself five years from now what do you want that to look like do you want to be running a bigger business do you want to sell your business do you want to change your business how do you want your life in general to look like do you do you want to be living where you are now do you want to have more kids do you want to move somewhere else um and then how do you want to feel do you want to feel happier less anxious less stressed do you want to feel busier um write all that down so write down in your business what you want it to look like do you want to be not working with clients but mostly online do you want to be only working one-on-one -on -one? how do you want your business to look like how do you want to feel in life and what do you want that to look like so this is where you're gonna write all that down and just really paint the picture for yourself remember no goals just what do you want the picture to look like and how do you want to feel and I know a lot of planners have a three year and a 10 year, but I feel like a five is like that sweet spot because you can work towards stuff in the five, but it also gives you room to change because things come up, life happens and you know, you can bend and change and decide, you know what, that's not what I want to do anymore. Um, and it still gives you room to be flexible, but it's not so far away in 10 years that you might feel like it's not worth it. Okay, so write all that down now let's move to step two list all your values and ideals that are important to you below now sometimes you might think well, what's a value or an ideal values or ideals are things that are important to you at this moment in your life now they don't usually change so goals can change goals can change all the time you set a goal steps to 
to achieve your goal and sometimes things happen and you can reassess and reevaluate your goals but values don't normally change too much um, they usually only change when bigger things in your life happen and you as a person changes so for example values can be you value and it doesn't have to be like broad like I value my family I'm gonna say most of us value our families but maybe you write down I value spending the weekends with my kids and my husband okay or an ideal would be like my ideal is for me personally my ideal is staying at home and teaching my daughter okay so those are values and ideals and of course they're gonna change because guess what when Penny wasn't around that wasn't an ideal or a value that I had because Seth and I had all week to hang out together so if I wanted to work and travel like I did when I was teaching at hair salons and traveling and stuff um, the uh, the value of staying at home with my family wasn't there because I was traveling on the weekends and that was okay because Seth and I had all week to hang out together and have date nights and we could do all kinds of stuff but now that Penny's here my values have changed so they can change so list your values list your ideals think about things that are important to you think about things that you cherish think about things that make you happy think about things that you want to strive for like that picture-perfect whatever you feel in your heart and it doesn't always just have to be family um, things that you value maybe you value some quiet time alone <laughs> now that you have kids and you're a mom you really value that quiet time that you have so that's something that you want to keep that's precious to you um, maybe you value getting out of the house um, if you're a stay-at-home mom, if you're working a business from home, you value time that you can get out of the house, get some fresh air, and go do something. Maybe that wasn't such a value or something that wasn't important when you didn't have kids because you could just be in and out whenever you wanted, but now you really value that. So write down your values and your ideals right here. Now, here's the fun part, your goals. Don't worry about this, just list the goals. Okay, so... Think about your big picture, think about your values, and now think about some goals. Now you might already have a bunch of goals, just write them down. But if you're having trouble coming up with goals, then having your values and your big picture in mind will help you with your goals. Write down everything. Remember it says big and small, even if it seems stupid, like, oh, I don't know. Okay, like me, I have a goal that I want to do my nails once a week to keep my nails looking nice. That's a goal, but in the grand scheme of things, is it, is it the most important thing? No, but it is important to me because it makes me feel better. Um, so I'm going to put that down, okay? So it can be a big goal like paying off credit card debt. It can be a little goal like having my nails done once a week. It can be anything big and small, work or life. Do you want to have enough money to buy a new home? Do you want to put your kids in this really great school? Do you want to keep your home, kids home and homeschool? Do you want to have a business that is mostly mm, passive income? Do you want to have a business that grows and you get your own warehouse? All kinds of things, right? All these goals and plans, uh, big and small right here. Okay, now, I'm not even writing, but that's okay. <laughs> Here is what I'm talking about, the go back and rank. So now you've written your big picture on the other side, you have some values and ideals, and you don't have to fill them all out. This just gives you space. If you have like four or five, that's fine. Use what you have. And then also I gave you extra space in case you're like me, or if you write big and you need more space, you can um, make your list on this side too. So now you're going to go back and rank. And this is the cool part that I think a lot of planners are missing. How do you know what to work on first? How do you know what goal is more important than the other? How do you know what you need to achieve first to achieve the other goals? That's where the ranking comes in. So the plus is positive and little minus sign is negative and the na is not applicable not applicable <laughs> or um that it it doesn't it doesn't affect non-effective either way so 
This is gonna take a little time, but this is what you're gonna do. I'm gonna write down some examples here now. So let's say my goal number one is to, oh, like I said, um, manicure once a week. And then my other goal is to pay off a credit card. Okay, now I'm gonna put a couple of values and ideals here. So one of my values I did say was that I like to stay home with family on the weekends. These of course are just mine and they're just for examples. Um, I'm just gonna leave it at that so we can get moving. All right, you got one value, two goals. All right, so this is what you're gonna do. For every single goal, you're going to check every single value, okay? So if I have 10 values next to this goal number one for my manicure once a week, I'm gonna have 10 check marks distributed between these three um, columns, okay? So manicure once a week. So I'm gonna look at my value of staying at home with my family on the weekends. Does this goal um, help me stay at home with my family on the weekends? So if it helps me stay at home with my family on the weekends, I'm gonna put a check mark in the positive. And I should have moved these down a little bit. Whoopsie doopsie, that's okay. So uh, I'm gonna say, I don't think it helps me stay at home with my family on the weekends, not really. So then I'm going to say, does this goal take away from me staying at home with my family. And honestly, I don't really think so either because it's manicure takes an hour. I don't think it's gonna take me away from my family on the whole weekend. So then it would be non-applicable. So I would put a check mark next to NA for goal number one. Now I'm going to, if I had two values, because remember, you're probably going to have way more values than just one value. Um, what else do I value? You know what I value? I love homesteading. I love homesteading. I love cooking, baking, gardening, knitting, all that kind of stuff. So then I would go to value number two. I would say, is doing a manicure once a week going to add to my value of homesteading? Uh, I don't really think so. Is it going to take away from my value of homesteading? I don't really think so either because it's a small thing that I can do and I can still cook and bake and, and knit and plant and all that kind of stuff. So again, it's not applicable. All right. So you're going to keep, you're going to do one goal at a time and go back and forth against every single value and ideal that you have. And so if you have 10 values, you need to have 10 check marks spread out between the plus, the minus, and the NA. And now you're gonna to go to your next goal. So this is gonna take a little time. Really sit down and give yourself a little time. Make sure the kids are asleep. <laughs> put them to bed. Maybe they're at grandma's. Make sure they're taking their nap. And then sit down, relax, put some relaxed music on. And then go through this, because this is going to help set you up for the year to know what goals are truly worthwhile and what goals to do first. So I'll do one more, paying off my credit card. So, paying off my credit card, is that gonna help me stay at home with my family on the weekends? Actually, yes. Because if I have my credit card paid off, I won't be trying to hustle and make money on the weekends or be thinking about, oh, I gotta work and do this and that. If my credit card's paid off, that's one less bill, and that's like one of the top bills on my mind. So I'm gonna say, yes, it is gonna help me. So I'm gonna put a check mark in the positive. Paying off my credit card, is it gonna help me homestead? I think yes as well because again once I get this major thing down I'm going to have more time to relax and knit and do all like those small projects instead of always thinking about oh I have this big bill that I need to get you know get down and I have to hustle more and work more or do a side job or whatever to get this big bill down so homesteading is not a necessity for my life but it's something that I enjoy I enjoy I enjoy cooking new recipes, I enjoy knitting product projects, I enjoy planting things. But if my mind is constantly thinking about this, I don't have time to enjoy this. So yes, that's a positive, okay? 
and so then I would just keep going against all my values. Now, once you're all done with all of your goals, now you can see what goals have the most positives, what goals have the most negatives, and what goals have the most not applicable. They just don't really matter either way against, they don't affect negatively or positively your values. So now you can really see what goals you need to do first. What has needs the most attention and importance? <clears throat> Excuse me. So paying off my credit card is going to be a bigger goal than doing my manicure. Now I would like to note that the manicure has no negatives. So as you go through all the things, you can obviously work on more than one goal at the same time. But I would pick the goals of that have the most positives as your top primary goals, then the goals that have the most like non-applicable as like your middle goals, and then whatever goals have a minus, really just take a relook at them. Because if they have like one minus but mostly positives, then that's okay. Not everything is going to be a hundred percent either way. Um, the goals that have more negatives versus positives or NAs, those ones I want you to reassess. Maybe it's not a no, but maybe it's not right now. Maybe once you get other goals taken care of and you can enjoy your values more, maybe the other goals that have some minuses can be done at a different time. So that is how you can figure out how to plan out your year, plan out your goals, plan out what you need to work on first and what is going to help you and everybody is different. And so this is really going to help you know what goals are best for you. And maybe having a manicure and time to yourself is better for you because maybe you have values of spending time, having that time for yourself or getting out of the house or doing more self care. Well, getting a manicure would definitely check positive in if you're going to go out for a manicure, getting out of the house, time for yourself, more self-care. That might have a whole bunch of positives. So everybody's different. So don't let anybody tell you like, oh, these things are not important. These things are more important. You know your life according to your values and your ideals in this time of your life. And then come back. Come back three months later and check your values. Come back six months later and check your values. As you get closer to that five year, what you want your life to look like, you're gonna say, hey man, I've already done this. Wow, I've already achieved that. You know what, that's not even important to me anymore. And you're gonna be able to tweak things, okay? So I hope you really liked this. I'm really excited about it. I think it's gonna give you so much clarity and direction. Um, and let me know what you think, okay? So let me know what you think about that. Oh, side note, look at this manicure. Okay, if you watched my last video, I was telling you that I was using Manny Me as like a little experiment. And this is day number six. And oh my gosh, friends, I'm thoroughly impressed because I, like I said in my last video, um, professionally did nails in a salon for many years and the most I can get out of a professional manicure not gel or acrylic but just a a natural nail manicure is five days tops day six it starts to wear and crack day seven your nails look terrible you need a new manicure so this is day st day uh, six and I think this is looking really good for six days. There's a little cracking, a little wear. The tips are starting to wear, but I am loving this. So follow along because tomorrow I'm going to do my manicure. I'm going to change it up. I got a couple different brands. And so I'm going to see which one I really, really like. Okay. And one last thing before you go, I have something really cool to show you. I just made it yesterday. This is brand new. This is our January monthly goals dashboard. It's gonna be awesome. So this is actually free. And what you're gonna do is for the month, pick out the goals that you want to work on, right? Cause you're gonna have a long list and you're gonna decide which ones are 
more important which ones are you know which ones you want to start on first you have them separated your mom life your biz life mom life is going to include all the things that involve being a mom goals for you goals for your family goals for your house maybe you want to get your office organized whatever you got write your goals at the top and then write all of your uh, steps that you want to do to achieve that goal maybe at the bottom write down when you want to have it done and then extra notes here if you need to have some extra notes and then at the back because you know I love dot grid uh, dot grid for mind mapping if you need to plan out some goals like you're not sure what steps or it has a lot of steps um, you can mind map all the steps that you need to do up here you can do a little journaling or some list making so this is a freebie on my website i'll have the link in the notes and yeah you just go and you sign up and i'll send it to you as a freebie now the cool thing is, is you can use it all by yourself as just a solo goal mapping work uh dashboard or i have it slightly off center so you can punch it and you can put it right in your planner and then it becomes a monthly divider tab. So for January, there we go. This is the very first month. It's going to be January, right? Okay. You can punch it and put it right here in the front. So that's going to be your monthly divider tab. I uh, printed out on cardstock so it's a little thicker. And you can buy these little tabs. I actually have some, but I don't have some right now. They're, I mean, I bought some like for $5 for a pack. And um, they're little monthly tabs. They stick like this. Doot, stick it right there. And now you have a little monthly divider dashboard. So you can see all your months. And it's sturdier. You got your plans. You got your habit tracking. And then you got your monthly calendar. So, awesome. Like I said, it's free. Go to my website, click the link. You can use it all by itself or you can put it in your planner as well. Okay, friends, I gotta get going. I don't know if you're hearing Penny scream in the background. Seth is being amazing. He's fed her lunch and probably will put her down for a nap. I will talk to you later. Bye.